Hey guys, it's Mandy. Welcome back to my channel. Because I am so far behind on making videos, I'm going to combine July and August, the financial breakdown for the rent houses. I'm going to combine the that into one video. So this video is going to be the finances for both July and August. And so with that being said, there are quite a few numbers to go over. I'm just gonna get started on the video. I'm not gonna go over any background or anything like that. If you want to know more about my houses or how I got them, you'll have to watch uh, January's video or I'll, I'll link a couple videos down below where you can find out that information. But basically I have 16 houses that are rental properties and then we have five houses that we have owner financed. So for the income for July and August, the rental income was $16,590. And then for the owner financed properties, that income was $5,579. And that puts the total income for those two months at $22,169. That total was just a little bit higher than it would normally be and that's because of the owner finance properties one of those properties was actually paid off last month they just owed a, a couple thousand dollars left on the property and so they went ahead and paid that and it's it's paid off the rental income is spot on I didn't have anybody miss rent I didn't have anybody pay late everything is, is spot on there now I actually did have a couple people pay early but I didn't include the the overage. I just put that on for the next month. Okay, so for the expenses, the mortgage payment for those two months was $5,520. Now I do always call that a mortgage and I think it's maybe a little confusing. It's really more like a loan repayment with interest to my mom because I borrowed money from my mom to buy some of these houses. Then we had one insurance policy that was due and that was $525. That was for, for the year, just for one property. If you watch the other videos, you know that I've been working on getting all of the trees that have limbs over the houses, getting all those trimmed and any trees that are dead cut down and that kind of thing. I have been really glad that I went ahead and did that this year because I have seen quite a few people either have limbs fall on their houses or uh, big trees fall down in their yards. And I just, <laughs> I, I'm happy to avoid any of that. One of our houses, we had actually four trees trimmed and one tree, a small tree cut down, but it was growing really, really close to the house. And that was $900. The next expenses are all in the category of plumbing. I have been having crazy plumbing problems this year, or at least for the last couple of months, we've just had plumbing issue after plumbing issue after plumbing issue. Luckily, this is all mostly still from July and we really haven't had any more issues since then, so I think it's maybe slowed down. But we had a bathtub faucet that was leaking, and the problem with that was it wasn't just an easy replacement. It needed to be replaced. They had already tried putting a washer in, and the washer didn't work. It still kept leaking, so the faucet just needed replaced. But it's a tiled bathtub, and there was no way for them to, to access that faucet from the back because the kitchen was up against the back side of the bathtub. So you would have been going through the kitchen cabinets. So they had to go in from the tile for, for the plumber to replace the faucet. He also had to have a tile guy there to repair the tile that he messed up when he went in to take the faucet out. So the bathtub faucet replacement, that was $295. I think it was a little high, but I think it's also because they did go ahead and try the washer first and that didn't work. So we got charged for that um, labor there as well. And then for the bathtub tile repair, that was $200, but he did a really good job. He regrouted the whole, he didn't just do the tiles right around the faucet, he re-grouted the entire wall there and it looks really nice. 
And then the next thing is that we had a toilet that was just running and running and it wouldn't shut off. And it was actually a very old toilet and I had made a mental note myself that the next plumbing issue we had with that house, I would just have the plumber also replace the toilet when he went over there. The first plumbing issue we had was with the toilet. So I called the plumber and just had him put in a new toilet that was $320, which is, I think, really good because the cost for the toilet was $210. And then he had to also buy, he let me watch him, which was really nice. And he had to buy this different kind of, not, not the seal, not the wax seal, but the pipe where it goes into the ground, he had to buy some kind of cap for that. And that was like 20 bucks. So he hardly charged me anything for labor, labor and he was there two, three hours. So. I thought that was a really good price to get a new toilet. And we're starting to get into kind of like septic and drain issues here and not so much plumbing, but I just put them all together in the plumbing category. I had a washing machine drain that was backing up in one of the houses. So every time she would do laundry, it would flood the, the laundry room. And luckily this house did have like a little like laundry room, it's tile in there, so it didn't really do any damage water wise. My septic tank guy went over there and took care of that. He does lines and clears them out and things like that. And so he just cleared out that line and it was $180. And then the last maintenance issue that I have in the plumbing category is that we had a septic tank back up. The tenant called me and told me that the septic tank was backing up into the bathtub. Uh, anytime you have water backing up in the bathtub, you almost always are going to assume that it's a septic tank issue. It could be something else, but it's almost always going to be a septic tank issue. So I called the septic tank guy. He got the line cleared out so that they could use it for that day. And then in the very next morning, he came with a backhoe. They actually had to dig out the septic tank because the lid wasn't visible. Then they pumped it out and got it working again. And that was $675. So I, that's a really... I thought that was almost too cheap because he was out there for two days. Really good price there. And now you may be wondering, you know, why do we let the septic tank get so full before pumping it out? And here's my dilemma and what I've been trying to get done. We have 16 properties. Two of them are on the city sewer and then 14 of them have septic tanks. I know n almost nothing about any of these septic tanks. A lot of them don't even have lids that are visible. So I don't know when the last time they've been pumped. I don't know if you can even pump them. I'm assuming that a lot of them do not even have plastic septic tanks. They probably have the original metal septic tanks that are basically rotted into the ground. And um, I'm just not even sure where to start. Part of me was like, well, I'll just address it every time we have an issue. And then once we get the septic tank replaced, I'll put it on a schedule and we'll get it pumped every five years. But now I have the, the septic tank guy that I use. He's trying to get a couple weeks cleared out of his schedule and he's just gonna go over to every single house and find the septic tanks where they're at. So we're gonna try to figure out if they're plastic or if they're metal. If they're metal, we will know for sure they have to be replaced. If they're plastic, we're gonna try to get them pumped and hopefully we can get everything taken care of then. We're not gonna replace all the metal ones right away. We'll schedule them all for next year and get them replaced one every couple of months, but hopefully that works out. The next maintenance category is AC. I had some heat and air issues this month, really just with two houses, but it did end up being kind of expensive. So one house, they called me and said that the air conditioner was making this like terrible banging noise every time they turned it on. And I called my heat and air guy. He came out and charged me $250 and supposedly fixed the problem, but the tenants called back the same day and said it's still banging. And this guy, I have been giving him a chance on the heat and air because he is also my electrician and he does a really good job with the electrical problems and anything that I've had and he fixed a really big issue for me a couple years ago when I first took over my dad's properties for what I thought was just like a really awesome price and so I wanted to kind of be loyal to him and then he expanded his business to where he also did heat and air. He doesn't do the heat and air himself he has an employee who he sends out who does heat and air. In my experience he rarely he really hasn't fixed any of the problems the first time he's come out. 
So I pay him a whole bunch of money and he's there for like three or four hours. It almost feels like I'm paying for the employee's training. And so I, you know, I'm paying like $65 an hour or something crazy. And then the problem doesn't end up being fixed. So when they said, you know, it's still not fixed, I didn't even bother calling him back. I just called another heat and air guy and that guy came out, he fixed the problem. It was just a bracket that was broken in the outside part of the unit. So it was just making a bunch of noise. So he replaced the bracket and that was $185. So I paid like $400 to get a bracket replaced. And then I had another house and she called and she said when she the AC would shut off, it would make a really loud noise. And so I thought, okay, I mean, it sounds kind of like a similar thing. I definitely guess I need to call. That, that's the thing, I just, with heat and air, I don't really know, I just to err on the safe side, I always call someone to come look at it if they tell me that they suspect there's a problem, even if the unit seems to be running normally, if there's any noise or things like that, because you would just assume something's wrong. Well, the guy comes out and there's a dehumidifier hooked up to the water heater. It automatically, like it circulates, so the dehumidifier automatically drains down into the hot water heater. And uh, that way it can just, you never have to empty it. It's just like on a circle, works on its own in the basement. It was like that when we bought the house, a big dehumidifier. The problem was nothing with the air conditioner. It was just that the dehumidifier had gone out. It wasn't working anymore and it was just making a loud noise. So he unplugged it and then he said he was gonna come back and like run some Freon through the air conditioner and just spiff it up, I guess. And that was $131, but he's never come back and run the Freon through the air conditioner. So I guess I'm gonna have to call him and be like, look, I paid you for that. Okay, so there's only two more things. One of them was I had some gutters repaired on one of the houses. The gutters were actually sloped incorrectly. So instead of the water draining out of the downspout, it was just backing up and pouring over and going into the uh, soffit and like rotting it out basically. And it was causing a lot of damage. I had them come out and repair it. They added a couple downspouts because we were having some issues with water on this house. Like it was pulling up, the gutters just weren't working correctly. And part of the issue was that that portion of the gutters was sloped incorrectly. But the other issue was there just weren't enough downspouts for, for the amount of gutter that there was. And so the water would pull up and run over before it could all run out of the downspouts fast enough. So they added like two or three downspouts and they sloped the gutters correctly and they also added leaf guards where they had blown off of the roof. There were some leaf guards there but some had blown off. And so that was $410. They did a really good job and I was I was impressed with that. I thought that the price was good on that. And the last expense was just to our accountant uh, who does our taxes and he sends out quarterly statements for the rent houses, the finances and everything like that. That was $375 and he, that is well worth it. He is very, very smart. He does a really good job, really nice, really intelligent guy. Now the total expenses for July and August ended up being $9,966. So that makes year to date, the total income that we have brought in from the rental properties has been $113,181. And the total expenses that we have paid have been $86,861, which makes the total profit $26,000. $320. So we are actually making some money, which I'm I'm kind of surprised by myself. If you watched like January or February's videos, you know that I thought we would probably just break even this year. And I, I kind of calculated like a lot of room for air, but then we have also had a lot of expenses that I never expected to have. And even with all, like we had three roof replacements, even with all those big expenses, uh, we have still made, managed to make some money. So I'm really pleased with that. I'll see you next time. Bye.